Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's WordPress video, we're going to be taking a look at another Visual Composer set of widgets. We're going to be taking a look at the grid options. Now, this is a great way to create custom pages with custom layouts, and we're going to take a look at the basic options this gives us. And in a future video, we'll take a look at how we can actually create our own grid layouts, and we can use those within our designs. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. So I've got WordPress open in front of me, and as you can see, I've got a page created and Visual Composer open, ready to start adding elements. So all we're going to do is click Add Element, and that'll bring us up the options, and we can choose what elements we want to insert. Now we've got two options we're going to take a look at today. We're going to take a look at the Post Grid, and we're going to take a look at the Media Grid. And in a future video, we'll also take a look at the Post Masonry Grid. Like I say, for now, we're going to concentrate on these first two elements. So let's start off with the Post Grid. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to pull information in from posts and we can specify which categories and so on. And it'll pull in the featured image, it'll pull in some information about it and create a link to it. So we can make our pages look a lot more visual instead of just a simple list. So we can get creative with the style, we can get creative with the number of posts we put on there, a whole host of different features. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the basics of those, but I'd encourage you to get stuck in there and start editing the settings yourself and find out what works with the design that you were looking for. So let's take a look at what we've got available to us under the General tab. You can see in this example, even though it's called the Post Grid, we can actually come in and we can choose a different range of options. We can choose from Post, Page, Attachment, Pricing Table, Custom Query, or List of IDs. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to just use the Post, and this is going to just pull in the information from posts I've previously created that have a featured image and things like that applied to them. So we can narrow that data source down if we want to. We can start customizing that and cutting it down to categories or tags you may have applied to any particular post or even custom taxonomies. We're going to keep it simple. Like I say, we're going to leave this as it is. But again, I would encourage you to try this out if you've got a specific requirement in mind. The total number of items we want to display at any one time. We can set that to minus one to display everything or we can limit it to up to a thousand. Now, what I would suggest you do when you're doing this is Limit it to number of multiples. For example, if I'm going to set this up to be in three columns, that it's either going to be total number of items is six, 12, you know, that kind of thing. So it works in multiples of whatever you set the columns. That way, you know, you're going to end up with a nice simple layout. The display style, you can see we can say show everyone we want to load in. We can load it with the more button. We can have lazy loading. So as we scroll down the page, that'll load extra posts in until we reach the limit of, or the the sort of all the posts we have available, or we can add pagination in there so we can allow the user to click through in blocks of X number of posts. I'll leave that to be, well, actually I'm going to come down and say I'm going to have load more button. So at the bottom of the page, it'll ask me to load more in once I've reached the limit of the items per page. And for this example, I'm going to set that to six. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the grid elements per row. You can see we can set this up to one, two, three, four, or six. So I'm going to set that to be three. Do I want to show a filter, which will allow me to filter the information that's being shown at any point? Well, I've got everything created in one simple uh, section or one simple category in my posts. But if you had multiple categories, you can say show filter. And once you do that, you can see it opens up the option at the top to insert filters. And for now, we'll leave that checked so we can take a look at that to show you the options that are available in there. We've also then got the ability to set a gap. Now, this will just put some space around each one of the grid elements just to make sure they don't all butt up close together. So you can control that just by simply using the drop down and choose from any of the predefined options. As with pretty much everything we go in this, if we want to style this element separately, we can give it a class name and then we can reference that with our custom CSS. So that's everything under the general tab. So let's move on to the data settings and see what information is available to us there to configure this particular layout. So this section allows us to specify how we want this information to be displayed. So you can see we can sort it by the date, the order by post ID, and a whole host of different options. Again, use whatever is relevant to what you're trying to achieve. But for this example, I'm just going to leave this set to date. I can specify whether I want it descending or ascending. I could even put an offset in there, which again, I'm not going to worry too much about in this one. And if I want to exclude any specific things like by their title or post or pages and things like that, I can type that in there and I'll exclude certain elements. 
So the filter option gives us the ability to set, specify how we want to filter this information if we've checked the box that says show filter under the general tab. So you can see we can filter by the category or we can filter by tags. Now this is going to change based upon the actual source of the information, but they all should be pretty self-explanatory. You can again, you've got the exclude option, so we can exclude certain things like certain tags or categories that they won't be shown in this filter. We can specify how the filters are going to be displayed, whether you want rounded, less rounded, border, and so on, so the buttons will be styled how we want them. We can align them. We can even choose the color option we want to work with, or we can create a custom color option. We can even come down and specify the size of the filter. And when they say the size of the filter and the color and so on, it's just effectively a list of buttons at the top of the screen that allow us to filter the information by clicking on them, and that'll filter the data that's being displayed. Now I'm going to simply just come back to the general tab. I'm going to uncheck that because we've taken a look at it. And now we're going to take a look at item design. So this is where it starts to get a little bit creative. You can see we've got a whole range of options. We've got basic grid, masonry grid, and we've got masonry media. Now the thing to bear in mind with this is if you're dealing with a masonry media, this is more geared towards dealing with media information as in photographs and, and images to what we're looking to do here, where we want some information from the text. We want to pull some, some text information from the post. We want to pull the picture and some other information. So I would suggest with this, you stick to either the basic grid or the masonry grid options, and they should give you everything you need. You can ultimately customize these, or you can create your own if you want to. And like I say, we're going to take a look at that in a future video where we'll create a custom design to one of these, these grid elements. And then we'll come back in and change it and take a look at how we can do all that. But for now, for this video, we're just going to keep it simple and choose one of the predefined options. So let's just go for, we'll have vertical flip. I'm not really bothered which we have for now. But you'll see we can underneath this create new or we can modify the selected one which will take us through and clone that information and then allow us to edit that to style it the way that we would want it to be. Next we've got the design options which is what we're used to where we can apply margins and padding and borders and things like that. And finally we have the load more button. So much the same way as we had the filter options, you can see we can specify quite a bit of information. We can title this, we can give it a text, so our button will be text exactly how we want it. So we can say load more posts or load additional images or whatever you would want in there. We can specify the style of the button, so you can see we can choose from modern, classic, flat, and so on. We can specify then where we want to be rounded, square, or round. And we can again choose from one of the predefined color layouts that are supplied with Visual Composer. We can also come down and choose the size of the button. So you can see we've got four options available there. We can specify whether it's inline, aligned, left, right, or center. Um, for this example, we'll go for center. And we can specify whether we want it to be full width. And we'll say yes. <coughs> Excuse me. We can also come in if we want to add an icon. If we check that, you'll see that opens up some additional options where we can choose the alignment of the icon and the library of the icon and the actual icon itself. But for this example, I'm just going to say I don't want one. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit Save Changes. I'm going to update my page, and then we'll jump over and take a look at what this looks like on the actual page itself. So we're looking at our example page now, and as you can see, it's empty at the moment. So all I need to do is refresh this now so it'll load in the information we just laid out. And that'll load in the first six posts styled the way that we set up within the, the actual editor itself. So you can see we can now mouse over any of these and they'll pull up the information style the way you want. You can see the load more button is set up exactly as we wanted it, which is full width in blue with load more written on there. And we can see we've got some basic information, the title of the post, the actual basic content of the, the beginning of the post. And if we take our mouse off that, you can see we've got the actual image from the featured image of the post. So there's one style, and as you can see, we can come over those and we get some nice animation effects, and it's uh, it's all quite nice and visual. But let's just say that's not what we're looking for. Let's go back into the editor and adjust that while we'll just change some of the settings in there. So let's go and choose a different item design. And we'll say, let's go for scale with rotation and the load more button. Well, I don't like the blue on that, so I'm going to go for classic gray. I'm going to have that. I don't want it to be full width this time, and I'm going to specify I want it to be a large button. And we're going to have it set to square. So let's just save the changes on that. Update our page. Switch back over to the front end of the site. And we'll refresh that. And we'll see now the new grid layout that we've got applied to our page. So you can see a completely different style, a completely different design. 
different mouse over effect. All the basic information is still there. We've still got the image. We've got the title of the post. We've got the sort of cut down abbreviated version of the content of the post, but we now have a read more button. And if we scroll to the bottom, you can see our load more button is slightly different. If I click on that, that'll load in an extra post. If we had eight, 12 posts or 18 posts, then it would load these in in groups of six, which is what we defined originally. So you can see it's quite a nice way of laying out the information. So instead of having your typical standard blog page, you can get a little bit more creative and you can specify how you want your page to appear with posts. So this is the post grid. We're going to take a look now at the media grid and how that works slightly differently, but the options that it gives us and how we can use it. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so we're back in the admin and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this post grid now we've finished with it. So I'm just going to throw that away, say yes, I want to get rid of it. And we'll click to add the new element. And for this example, we're going to choose media grid. That'll open up the options that are available to us inside that. And as you can see, we've got some of the same kind of options. But what we can do is we can now choose the images we want to display in this media grid. So this is going to be great if you want a portfolio of photographs or anything like that. So let's just choose some images from our media library. And I'll just choose, eh, that'll do. We'll just choose six images. We'll add those images in. And once they are loaded, we can now go and set the options. So you can see in the same ways we had before, we can say how many we want to display, how we want to display that so we can actually access more. So we've got the show all, load more button and so on. For this example, we'll just leave show all. Grid elements per row, again, one, two, three, four, six. The gap, how much space you want to allow around each of these images. The item design allows us to choose what type of layout we want to use. So let's just go for, let's have simple overlay. And design options allow us to do some other things with the margins and padded and so on, the kind of things we're used to with every of these, every one of these plugin elements. So let's just say, save those changes, update our page, switch over to the main site and we'll refresh this page now and we'll see the new layout with different elements. So there you go. We now have images displayed so we can just click, view the larger version of it and we can scroll through those. We can play as a slideshow or we can use the thumbnails at the bottom to actually choose what image we want to jump to next. And in the same way we did before, we can come back to this and we can just edit this, load that up, go to the item design, and we can change this to a different one. So we can say, let's try slide with title and caption, save the changes on that, update this, and then just jump back over to the site, refresh the page, and we'll see the new version of that now available to us. So you can see we now have a different style. And again, we can click to get the larger image up on the exact same as we could last time. So that's all there really is to these different um, elements. I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you some insight into how you could create custom layouts on your website. If you have found this useful, please hit the subscribe button. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this, or any of the other videos on our channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post, and we try to come back and answer any questions you may have. Well, until next time, take care.